Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the part of the world where you are today. Thank you for joining another session of the prayer word and worship. And today I have a question for you. Do you trust God? Before you answer it, I want us to really think about it. What does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to trust him? Looking through the dictionary for the definition of trust, it says to firmly believe in the reliability, truth, or ability of someone or something. When you firmly, when you are confident, when you can strongly say, I believe in the reliability, in the truth or ability of someone. So when you say you trust God, that means you believe he is reliable, he is trustworthy, and he is able. Do you truly believe that of God or do you just say it with your mouth? Because many of us say so many things with our mouth because, you know, it's a religious activity or because it's acceptable. But when we actually get to the cross of the matter and things happen to test our trust in God, we know we don't really trust God. So I want to ask us today, do you trust him? Because if you trust him, it means you will obey him. Trust is exemplified in our obedience to the person we trust. There's been the story of a boy that was on a height and the father said, jump. And the son jumped because the father promised, I'm going to catch you. And the father actually caught the son. But you know, the boy wouldn't have done that to a stranger or to another relative that he doesn't trust. Obedience is a reflection of your trust. How obedient you are to God shows how much you trust him. When God tells you, go this way, and you do it, it means you trust him totally. Look into the story of Abraham when God told him, go and sacrifice Isaac. He was willing to sacrifice him because he trusted God so much. He had been through so many situations with God, and he saw God coming through for him. Look at God promising him a child. And for more than 25 years, God kept reaffirming the promise. I am going to give you a son. Ishmael is not the son I promised you. I am going to give a son through Sarah. And eventually when God gave him that son, God said, sacrifice your son to me. And this man went ahead and he was so sure. He was doubly sure that I know this man. I trust this God. He has said it and he did it even when I lost hope. So how much more? I'm sure you can even raise this child up or give me another one. So you see, trust also comes through relationship with God. The experiences you've had in your relationship with God can give you the power to be able to trust him that I know he can do it. Your personal encounters with God can also help you to trust him more. Look at the three Hebrew men. They said, see, king, we are not going to bow down to this, your graven image. Because we only have one God that we serve. And we know our God is able to, sa to save us. And in case God does not save us, no problem. We will go into this fire. How many of us have been threatened? I'm going to put you in jail. If you don't do what I want you to do, you are going to lose your job. If you don't sleep with me, you are going to do this. If you don't do this. And you felt God is not able to save you. What fire are you going through that you lost hope in God? God, maybe he's sleeping. He cannot come for me. He cannot save me. You've been threatened. You allow the threat of men to make you fall from following God. We allow the disappointments we are going through. We've allowed the bad experiences we are going through, the challenges we are going through. We've allowed the Goliath of this world to charge at us, to make us feel afraid, to make us feel inferior that God is not able when God is able. This is coming to you once again. Do you truly trust God or you feel you trust God? Do you trust in God's power? Do you trust in God's reliability? Do you trust that God has the ability? Do you trust that God is trustworthy? Do you trust that God is dependable? In every situation, do you trust that God can come true for you? Or you trust more in your own ability? You trust more in your own power? You trust more in your own wisdom? You trust more in your own intellect and experience? And you look at God and say, there's a limit to what God can do. Our God is limitless. 
I pray the Lord we open our eyes today for us to know and to examine ourselves. And in any way, we are not trusting the Lord as we should. We will reroute and begin to trust him more. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at the story of David. After he was anointed in 1 Samuel 16, we see in 1 Samuel 17, he went to the battlefront to give his brethren food. And then he saw this man, nine feet tall man, that was saying to the Israel army, I am going to kill you. Give me your bravest soldier, the one that is experienced, that is going to fight with me. I will do this. I will do this. I will take you as slave. And the Bible says they were also afraid. They ran back. Despite their experiences, despite their strength. See, brethren, there are times that strength will fail you. There are times that money will fail you. There are times that your friends will fail you. There are times that your spouse cannot help you. There are even times your children cannot help you. That the only person that can help you is God. I'm sure many of us having gone through the pandemic from 2020 till now. We should have gotten to this point to know that even there are many times that medical knowledge will fail. Because it even failed doctors and nurses. It failed scientists that were working, even in the COVID era. And anyone that made it true can say it was only by God's mercy. Because even those that got COVID vaccine, some people got three doses of COVID vaccine and still died. Why are you still alive? If God is not able, if God does not still have something to do with our life. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This tells us that it's possible for you to trust God with a part of your heart and trust your, your power with a part of your heart and trust your ancestors with another part of your heart and trust your money with a part of your heart and trust your support with a part of your heart. It says, trust in the Lord with all, nothing with standing, nothing with holding, all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Another version says, do not lean on your own intelligence. Don't lean on your own ability. Don't feel like I can do it. Oh, I'm so good in this course. I don't even need to pray about it. No. In all your ways, acknowledge. What does it mean to acknowledge? To recognize. To give preference to. Acknowledge him. The Bible says, he shall direct your path. Another version says, he shall take all the obstacles from your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, my brethren. And do not lean on your own understanding. And when you've done that, you don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, even when you excel, you give all the glory to God. It is by the glory of God. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. When you excel, it's by God's glory. When you come forth, it's by God's glory. When you do something great, when you achieve what you even think is not possible, it's by God's glory. When somebody helps you, it is because God has given them the power to help you. In all your ways, acknowledge him. My brothers and my sisters today, are you acknowledging the Lord in all your ways? In all Career-wise, physical, spiritual, when you're using your talent for God, in everything you're doing, in your business, do you acknowledge God? Or do you take the glory for yourself? Or do you feel you are good enough because of your own power? In all your ways, acknowledge him. And the Bible says, he shall make your path straight when you acknowledge him. I pray the Lord will help us to always acknowledge him, to always trust him, and not to lean on our own understanding in whatever way, whatever form, in Jesus' name. Amen. The verse 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't see yourself as wise. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I don't need to pray about it. The failure of anything that we do as a child of God is a prayer failure. Many of us are filled in some endeavors because we failed to pray. Or even when we prayed, we failed to listen to God's instruction. As soon as we prayed, we just prayed to inform God. We didn't pray to carry the Lord along. No, we only pray to inform God. God, this is what I want to do. So just follow me to do it. And even if God is giving instruction, don't do it that way. We've made up our mind because our level of trust is very low. So my question today is, 
how well do you trust God? Do you even trust him at all? Or God is just a shareholder in your life. God only has 10% shares in your life. Or maybe for some people, you even gave him, you know, 40% shares, 60% shares, 70% shares. But the other portion that he has no shares there, he cannot say anything. God, you have no say on this one. I want to encourage us today to give every part of our life unto the Lord. Do not withhold any part of your life in all your ways, in anything you do, in any decisions you make, no matter how insignificant it is, acknowledge him. Many times we've gotten to the point that we don't acknowledge God the way we should. We don't give him reference the way we should. We don't seek his face. And even when he gives us instruction, we don't follow through. And we've missed our ways in many of those situations. We've missed our way. I'll give two instances from personal experience as I close this session. There was a day I was um, going to buy present for Father's Day for the church. There are different places where you could get the gift, but I was working with a limited time. So I prayed. I said, Holy Spirit, help me, please. Um, there are some shops in town I want to get to. Which one should I go? Which one will I be able to get what I want to get? And then the Holy Spirit directed me to another shop. That is not far from where we say. So I'm thinking, is it possible? Is it not possible? Okay, let's go there. And as soon as I got to the shop, everything I wanted, everything I planned for, I got it there. Like, it was just as if it was waiting for me. That day I was so joyful. I was so happy. Wow, this is beautiful. And, you know, at another time, I wanted to get outfit for my daughter. And I was thinking, which shop will I get it from? And the Holy Spirit told me explicitly, go to the shop, pass through this place. It's going to shorten the duration of time you will use, pass through this place, go to the shop, you will get it there. And I'm like, can that shop have what I need? Oh, my brethren, I went out that day. I went to about 10 shops. I'm not exaggerating. I was going in, coming out, going in, coming out, looking for that. I didn't find it. And the last place I went was the shop the Holy Spirit directed me to go in the first place. My brother and my sister, can you imagine the stress? I walked around for about an hour or more. And I entered this shop and I found what I was looking for. The shop the Holy Spirit asked me to go in the first place. Just imagine the time, the energy I would have. That is how many of us are. We pray to God, but when he gives us instruction, we doubt his ability. We doubt his ability to guide us. We're like, God, do you know what you're saying? You're praying about a man. You're praying about a business. And God is saying, no, don't go ahead. And you're saying, God, you don't know what you're saying. Like I tell people, when we make decisions, especially about our life, about our marital life, about our business or career, we make decisions based on what we know now on what we can see. But when God gives you an instruction, he gives you a direction, he's giving you based on your future. But many times we use our carnal eyes, our carnal art to measure it and say, God, it doesn't sound nice. And then we miss it. Some of us are at a crucial junction of making life-changing choices, of making life-changing decisions. Sit down and ask yourself, do I trust God? Do I trust him? Do I have a firm belief and confidence in his reliability, in his truth, and his ability to see me through? Or I am depending on myself. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I hope you have been blessed. I hope your eyes have been opened more to what this passage says. To trust in the Lord with all your heart. Please don't forget to like, to share, to comment, and to subscribe to this channel. Till we see you next time, bye and God bless.